What's shaking bacon? Welcome to the bartender and the butcher. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to take all of these ingredients and then turn them into all the bar essentials that I use for my home bar. Let's get into it. First, we're gonna start with something super simple, simple syrup. To make simple syrup, you're gonna do a ratio of water to sugar. A lot of people will do one cup of water to one and a half cups of sugar. I used to do one cup of water to two cups of sugar or a one to two ratio. I've changed it a little bit where I'll do one cup of water to 1.75 cups of sugar or one and three fourths of sugar. I like it not as sweet and I like it to be shelf stable. Anything above one to 1.5 will be shelf stable. I do everything by grams. So we're gonna use our scale and our measuring cup. We're gonna tear this out and we're gonna do 700 grams of sugar and then 400 grams of water because it fills up my jar perfectly, but you can use that ratio up and down however much you want. So we're gonna start. 535. So we're looking for 165. All right, so we got our 700 grams of sugar. We're gonna add 400 grams of water. 400 on the dot. We're gonna add it to our sugar from here. All we need to do is we're going to mix this up, put this on medium heat, have all of the sugar dissolve. You do wanna move it. You wanna make sure everything is coated, especially when you put the sugar in first. If not, the sugar on the bottom can actually burn to the pan. So once you have the sugar nicely dissolved, there's no sugar chunks or anything in it, it is ready to go. Once it's cooled down for a little bit, you can bottle it up. So you're gonna take whatever bottle you're using. You don't have to do this. I like to use a funnel as well as a strainer. You're gonna wanna make sure both are clean. Everything is sanitized because if not, that's where mold can start to come from. Pour it right in. And you're ready to go. So now we're gonna move into our Demerara simple syrup. So it's actually pretty much the exact same. The only difference is going to be you're gonna use Demerara sugar instead of the white plain sugar. You would want this because it adds a caramelly deeper note to a lot of drinks. You can definitely tell a difference when you're using Demerara sugar versus normal simple syrup. And we're gonna do the exact same recipe, one to 1.75. We're gonna do it a little bit different where I'm not gonna make as much because to be honest, I don't use as much Demerara simple syrup. I'll use it maybe a fourth of the time. So we're gonna do 100 175 grams of Demerara sugar to 100 grams. 106 grams, but that's okay. And we're gonna do the exact same thing where we put it on medium heat, keep an eye out for it, stir it, and let all of the sugar dissolve. Once it's dissolved, you're gonna wanna let it cool down just a little bit, and then we'll bottle it up. So now that we have our Demerara sugar nicely dissolved, this is going to look almost essentially like maple syrup. I use smaller containers. We're gonna take our funnel, we're gonna take our strainer, and we're gonna do the exact same thing where we just slowly pour it in. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And this is ready to go. Easy peasy. Now we're gonna move on to limes. So a lot of people would just use fresh limes in their bar, take them, cut them in half, squeeze them out for a drink. But that is only gonna get you maybe one, one and a half, two drinks. I like to do super lime juice, which is taking your lime, peeling the outside of it, cause there's a lot of oils and a lot of flavors in the peel. And then we'll put malic and citric acid with it into a jar. That will pull all of the oils out of it and leave you a very potent, flavorful lime concoction. We'll take that, we'll add water to it, blend it up, juice the limes and mix it all together. That is going to give you super lime juice and it lasts two weeks in the fridge. The reason you don't want to use just fresh squeezed lime juice is because after the first 30 minutes, the lime juice starts to oxidize and it starts to get bitter. So you don't want to just squeeze limes the day before. You want to do it that day. But that's also super time consuming when you are making a bunch of drinks for a bunch of people like I typically do. So I like to do super lime juice. You can have it in containers, easy pour it out, and you can make a bunch of drinks way faster. So let's get into it. First, you're gonna take your limes and you're gonna peel them. So you will need a drug scale for this. We're gonna turn it on, turn it to grams and start peeling your limes. You wanna try to get as minimal of the pith as possible. The outside is gonna hold the oils. That white pith is going to be quite bitter. There are other recipes online for this super lime juice. I like to do a much smaller amount of malic acid than citric acid. Malic acid is going to be the tartness. Citric acid is going to be the acidity that you get. You want the acidity to balance out the sweetness but you don't necessarily need extra tartness to balance it out. 
So we'll see how many grams of lime peel we have after the fact. Also, another fun fact about limes is you don't necessarily need the greenest of lime. When you have extremely green limes, it's actually because they're under ripened from the tree. This lime was pretty much pulled, I would say exactly when it was supposed to. This one was pulled early. The difference is this one's going to have more time on the tree and more times for those sugars to break down. And that's just going to lead to a sweeter lime and typically a juicier lime. Something else notable is this lime is much greener the first time I peeled, right? So when you look at it, it's not as shiny. The reason being is there's not as many oils in the peel of this one. This one is a different color and you can tell that it's slightly shiny because the sugars have been able to break down some of the pith. There's more oils in the peel itself. So when you're looking for limes, it's not necessarily the best to get as green as possible. These are actually gonna be a little bit more bitter while lighter limes are gonna be just a little bit sweeter. Which when you're adding citric acid is good because you want the lime juice to be slightly sweet because you're adding the acidity into it. Same reason that when we do the orge, we use an unsweetened almond milk is because we're adding the sugar into it and we wanna be able to control that sugar. We wanna kind of be able to control how acidic it is. When I'm doing this, I will pick a few lighter limes and a few darker limes just to get a good balance. You can do however many limes that you want. I typically will do four simply because that typically fills up two of my smaller containers. We have our four limes peeled. And one of the reasons that I also like to do super lime juice is because it oxidizes at a much lower rate because of the amount of ascorbic acid that's in it. In your lime peels, you're going to have no ascorbic acid. And we're going to add mainly malic and citric acid into this. And then we're going to add the lime juice from the four limes that we peeled. That is going to introduce ascorbic acid into the mixture, but not enough to have it oxidize very fast. And that's just going to keep your lime juice fresh and going for, you know, the two weeks that I said earlier, I would use it between seven days and probably 10 days. So it's a one-to-one. -one. We're going to do an 80-20% of malic to citric acid. This was 29 grams. We're gonna add 25 citric acid, and then we're gonna add four malic acid to bring that one-to-one. -one. It's not exactly 80-20, but it's what I like to do because I like it to be a little bit more acidic than I like it to be tart. So we're gonna add the 25 here. I like to mix it up as I go to get all of the peels kind of coated. Just a little bit more. Okay, just over 25, but we'll live. And now we'll introduce the malic acid, and we're just gonna bring this up to the 58. Perfect. So once this is done, you wanna make sure that all of the peels are coated in the malic and citric acid. You're gonna to wanna to wait about two to three hours for this to pull all the oils. And thanks to Movie Magic, we'll show you right now. Now our lime peels have been with the citric and malic acid. And as you can tell, all of the malic and citric acid has dissolved. So if we open this up, the lime peels are a deeper, darker color. And if you look, there's a lot of juice or oil in the bottom of it now. This is pretty much perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to add water to it. That's how we get the volume that we want. I like to do about a 15 times the ratio of the grams. So it's 29 grams. We're going to do 15 times that. We're gonna tear this out and we're going to get 435 grams of water. So now we simply add the mixture to it. I like to add the water into the container first, pour water over the lid, grab your bar spoon. Thank you. Give it a little stir that we know none of our ratios are incorrect. We will pour it right back in. Cut and juice the limes that we used. Last lime. Lime juice is flying all over my bar, but that's okay. You can wipe it up after this, knowing that your bar is sticky one time and this won't happen again for at least the next little bit. From here, we're gonna immersion blend it. One thing I should have added, you're going to need a nut milk bag as well. This is going to get all the little pieces of limes once you've immersion blended it out. So don't mind the cord, it's the closest out that I got. Make sure you're really getting all those lime peels. You're not gonna get it perfect, but you just want them broken up as much as you possibly can. It will start to froth up a little bit, as you can see. That's just air being incorporated into it as the immersion blender is going. Nothing to worry about and nothing that won't come out once you put it through the nut milk bag. All right, we're going to strain it. I like to get gloves on because we have to squeeze the juice out of the nut milk bag. So we're gonna take our bowl. You can also do a cup, whatever works for you. We just thought this would look better on camera. Take your bag, make sure it's the right side in and out. You want the inside seam in. If not, it is much harder to actually push it through the bag. I'm gonna take it. Put 
but you want to just strain it all the way through make sure all of your equipment is nice and clean this is why we're wearing gloves because you're coming in contact with pretty much all of the juice we're good to bottle it up and it's ready to go this is four limes i can make 12 16 drinks out of this much lime juice versus the four i would have potentially gotten with just those limes so it's also really great for waste management and getting the most out of your product now we're going to move into grenadine so the ingredients are going to be white sugar pomegranate juice and then these are optional rose water i wouldn't say is optional it's orange blossom water iffy i like to use both just to give it a little bit more of a complex flavor you do not need very much this goes a long long way we're going to be doing the same ratio and we're going to be using the same container as we did for the demerara sugar so we're going to do 175 to 100 sugar to pomegranate juice a lot of drinks as you can tell are packed with a lot of sugar that's why some people do a less ratio of simple syrup to decrease the amount of sugar 176 grams and now we're going to do 100 grams of pomegranate juice it has to be 100 percent you don't want any extra sugar added to it 104 grams so it's just over that's okay you're going to pour this into here you're going to mix it up just like the simple syrup and you're going to put it on medium and let all the sugar dissolve you want to add these at the end because if you add them now the heat burns that flavor away so my fault i forgot to mention that you're also going to need pomegranate molasses you can add it before or after as long as your pomegranate simple syrup is still warm you can eyeball it i like to add about a tablespoon and a couple drops of the orange blossom water and then we're gonna add just a couple drops of the rose water as well you will be able to smell it immediately once you drop each one of these and it smells extremely good all right we're gonna take our nice sterilized container funnel strainer and we're going to pour it right in and it's just such a beautiful color once you have that done it is ready to go and be used and lastly to finish off we're gonna make orge and it's essentially an almond flavored syrup so you're gonna want a good almond milk non-sweetened because we add our own sugar to it almond extract rose and orange blossom water just like before the exact same ratio 100 grams of almond milk 175 grams of sugar and then the same thing applies you're going to want to heat this up first before you add the almond extract the rose water and the orange blossom water so we'll be right back once your sugar is dissolved it's going to be almost a creamy color this is when we're going to add a little bit of the almond extract and then just a few dashes of the orange blossom water and the rose water it smells so great. Do the same thing. We're going to grab a sterile cup, all of our equipment, and we're going to pour the orge directly in. So when you do this, a lot of the times in my experience, a white sediment forms on the bottom after you let it sit for a while. I believe that's the almond extract, but I'm not 100% sure, honestly. Once you shake it up, it'll disperse back into it and it doesn't really affect it one way or the other. It is almond milk, but because of the amount of sugar we used, it is perfectly shelf stable. You have your Demerara sugar, your simple syrup, your grenadine, your lime juice, and your orge. Hello! If you're wondering why I'm in different clothing, it's because we forgot to record an outro the other day, so here I am. I also do not have any mix-ins to show you because I went through them all already. Yes. If you did enjoy the video and you learned something, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more bartending and butchery content. And until next time, goodbye! <laughs> <laughs> We might want to get the vacuum. You can cut that out. You can cut that out. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is kind of clumpy. A nice clean. Get our. What is this called? Yeah. Ooh, all right, let's restart it. Oh, <laughs> I know I misspoke earlier, but everyone makes mistakes. I put way too.